Hello and welcome back and today we're continuing to look at the brand new DS1621 Plus from Synology. We are looking at its performance in video station today. As you can see here, if we go to the information panel here, at the top left of the screen you'll see we are using the AMD Ryzen powered uh, NAS from Synology. And again, I know it's not a Ryzen 357 and stuff, but it's still 4 gig of memory and I still believe this to be an improvement over the Atom and Deviton or Denverton that we saw on predecessors. But Let's move forward. We've already done our Plex testing already. Hopefully on screen, um, what you're seeing right now is the performance monitors are on one side of the screen and along the bottom, the file sizes for the test later. But I can only really see this screen here. The Little Shop of Horrors screen there. And this is showing me um, the video station and the files we're going to be using today. We are using the same files we always use, the Matrix in 720p, we're utilizing Little Shop of Horrors in 1080p, and then we're gonna move over to those denser test files there. So, for now, let's go ahead and make our way into these files. Let's get those listed in the right order, shall we? Uh, let's get those in terms of a listing there, so we can see them a little bit better then, get that sorting list um, arranged, get that all by um, the name, let's go for all, and from there, we're going to keep an eye on the monitor there on screen. I know you guys are going to see it live. I'm only going to see it really in post. But for now, let's make our way into some of these files. So the first file we always test is the matrix. So let's go ahead and test that. This is a 720PH264 file. Uh, and again, this is not an as a CPU built for transcoding. It does not have embedded graphics like most uh, Ryzen's don't either. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares with our Plex tests before. But let's go ahead and play this file. And this is the matrix in 720p. We can find out a little bit more information about it here on the side if we choose. At the moment, it's still playing in original quality. And of course, we will be playing with the playback settings a little bit throughout the course of this video. Um, but what we're gonna do first thing is just test if we skip back and forward a few times, is it gonna absolutely be fine? And it is, we are accessing these files over the network rather than the internet. So do bear in mind while we're doing this, that if you are accessing your NAS for multimedia via the internet, then the results may vary. But I would say, that generally that is where transcoding and file reshaping are at its peak. And that is what we seek to emulate um, a kind of um, in a kind of forced hypothetical way here. So the first thing we're gonna do is switch it down to high. High is considered um, relative to 720p and it reshapes the file. And now it's gonna change that into the background. And you can see there, we have seen a dip there in frames per second. It's definitely lowered the bit rate of this file and we have moved down this maybe even 480p overall there. If we make that switch now, we can still see that we can still skip forward, but it's certainly lowered that quality there from what we see on screen. It's good that it's able to do that. And of course, this is designed for people on more limited systems or those with lower resolution support. And of course, those that are on uh, metered bandwidth. If we go all the way down to low, we're going to see things get real pixelated overall. I would argue, first thing, that this is not as fast in terms of responsiveness as Plex Media Server was, um, and that's a lot to do with Plex Media Server's own uh, insisted drivers uh, that they push for, that we've talked about before in those Celeron videos. Uh, this NAS is currently using its own software transcoding happening in the background, and I'm sure on screen you're almost certainly seeing resources being utilized at quite a high degree in fact on my screen i'm just going to have the resource monitor here just for me to keep an eye on that to flick between so we're going to exit out of uh, the 720p uh, h264 matrix and we're going to make our way into our 1080p test file and that's the little shop of horrors we're going to make our way into here this is 1080p h264 once again lots of information there built in on screen that we can go ahead and click play and again, I fully expect this 1080p file to play absolutely fine. If I skip around, and again, this is a file we are accessing remotely over the network. And again, lots of speed in terms of access there. We can flick all the way along. We can even increase the play speed if we want. There's lots of little settings that you can muck around with here inside. Lots of little bits and bobs. 
But again, we're here for the transcoding. So now let's flick over to high. It's now going to do a little bit of buffering and setting in the background. And it's going to go ahead and convert that file for us. Now again, we're seeing that frame rate drop. We're seeing that quality drop there, which is exactly what Synology are indicating here. Um, what I will add, of course, is that um, if you are accessing this on a remote device, you are almost certainly not going to utilize this set. And this is designed for a far more limited system, that particular tier that we switch to. But still, nevertheless, even then, it's still working very, very quickly in the background. Let's flick to low, where we're going to start being able to count those pixels. And we're taking the video station test. But right now, unlike our test with the 927, 2420, etc., where we saw that the uh, Plex was not as good as video station in 1621 plus it is arguable that plex outperforms video station here and i think a lot of that is to do with cpu architecture and that plex media tool and its own inbuilt encoder working with the cpu just a little bit more but as you can see it still ran but we've got that drop in frame rate i think we're down probably to about 15 frames per second there and We've got the pixelization from lowering that resolution in transcoding, which is to be expected. So, next we're going to make our way into those test files. We're going to start nice and low. We're going to go straight into the 3 megabit H.264. And this will be the one that should play absolutely fine. We're going to leave that. Turn my hands off the mouse. And as you can see, it's playing like an absolute dream. We're already starting to hear my laptop's fans kicking in there in the background. Um, kind of ramping up a little bit there in terms of noise. Unfortunately, that's completely unavoidable. I'm working in quite a close-knit environment for these testing uh, scenarios with multimedia. So, unfortunately, I can't really get around that. It is still playing back that file nice and fine. And if we go into some transcode in there, so if we rewind it back, and we're going to, this time, we're just going to go straight down to low quality there. Let's see what happens with the transcode. Now, if we see low to pixelation there, we've got that drop in frame rate as expected from lowering the playback quality. But, again, it was near enough instantaneous, maybe about... Just under a second there for the uh, change to happen, and we can flick all the way between. So here is where we're going to change tack a tiny bit, because now we're going to start looking at some of the HEVC or H.265 uh, media compression and a combination of that and 10 bit HDR. What that means is these are utilizing a uh, compression technique, a more modern compression technique for a 1080p and 4K that is generally kind of license-led. A lot of uh, platforms have to use third-party software in order to get around this. So what's going to happen now when we play that same file, but this time in H.265, we're going to see it immediately kick into the transcoding portion. And this is going to be the balancing act. As you see in the playback quality, we go straight into that lower dip in playback quality there because this CPU just doesn't have... The, the, the horsepower or indeed the access uh, to H.265 playback. Uh, and this is where an embedded CP, uh, embedded graphic CPU is going to save the day. And this is the whole thing about um, 4K playback and certainly H.265. This is where it all comes to pass. And this is why for a very long time we've not been recommending um, Atom and Denverton processors uh, for 4k playback it's very strongly connected to this and it's something where even some real tech cpu some of those arm 64-bit processors that we've seen on some of the play series uh, where they seemingly can take a lead in some of those areas and again this is to do with that he um hevc or h265 if we go into the same file with 10 bit we're going to hit that same limitation that's three megabits per second um quality uh, in 1080p HEVC 10 bit again jumped straight into high bitrate quality and then going down to low again forced transcoding there and it's just you're going to need that embedded uh, GPU uh, embedded CPU to take care of these things and I know I'm sounding like a broken record but it's important case in point we were looking at three megabits per second files there all three of them were three but now if we jump up a lot higher and we move to 30 so again 10 times uh, the megabits per second in an h264 i'm willing to bet this file is going to run fine as you see 
runs absolutely fine. We've got plenty of the bufferings all fine in the background. We're playing it in the original quality. And again, it comes down to time and time and again, the support of HEVC or H.265. We've got the transcoding potential. It can handle these files. So, as you see there, there's a little bit of a problem. I think when this is where we're going to start hitting the bottleneck of that CPU because we're not seeing the output of those files and the buffering is having difficulty keeping up. As you see here, we hit the five second mark and it all kind of falls apart. And that is kind of what we're going to see now for the rest of these tests. If we make our way into higher tiers and go into the 100 megabits per second and we go for initial playback, it should be able to handle the original quality quite well, which for a number of us is exactly what we want. We want to watch these files exactly as they were created, like so. But all too often, we want to watch them on mobiles, we want to watch them on lesser devices, and that is where we're going to hit problems, as you see here. So, we'll come out of it there, and again... It would be remiss of me not to at least end this video on the biggest file of all, so I am going to get there in a second. But now we're going to enter into 4K territory, and this is a 4K 120 megabits per second file. And again, we're going for the H.264 version. And again, it's worth highlighting that 4K and this CPU are not going to be the best friends. They are probably going to play... Uh, but even then, as you see here on screen, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. If we have a look there and go into quality, we're still able to play the original, but there was certainly a lot of work happening there in the background. And as you see, this is a 30-second file. And what's happened is the playback of the file has outpaced that of the um, buffering and, and the handling uh, of the NAS on that file. And you can hear the uh, fans on my CPU there of the laptop kicking in there as well as I'm dealing with quite a high dense file. So again, moving back, we can go into the second, um, oh sorry, we'll go into the largest tier and this is something that if this plays, I will be astounded if it can play um, at all. If it can play, you'll probably try to convert it, convert it into high and I think we'll get somewhere Maybe it'll play a few seconds and cop out on us. But this is a 4K UHD, 400 megabits per second, H.265, 10-bit, basically high-end, top-tier HDR content. And as you see, it got there. It's going to play a few seconds, I reckon. And that's all, we, and all she wrote. As you see, it's going to keep needing to buffer. That frame rate has gone down substantially. And that's because it's had to force that transcode quality. It's still maintaining high, but the more work we do on this, the just the worse we're going to get an output for this file. Now, in the system's defense, this is not a NAS with its eye on multimedia. This has never been a multimedia NAS. If you want a multimedia NAS, you go for something with a little bit of GPU behind it, embedded graphics, or maybe even dedicated GPU where possible. I will also add that some of the files we've been dealing with towards the end of this video are fantastically high-end. The odds of you owning a lot of media at this quality are in 2020 are slim to none. The majority of the quality of the multimedia you own is going to be at the start of this video. You might have some 4K in there, but it's not going to be the crazy 4K that we've looked at today. Remember, if ever you want to know what the quality of a file is on your NAS or on a PC, you simply need to right click it and find out more information about it. So if we go into that lower quality file here and go into properties, we can find out a little here, but you're not going to find anywhere near as much as if you checked it out on your own PC or Mac system. So if we go into it here and look at one of these files, we can find out a little bit of information, but there's nowhere near enough that as, as we would like. We can find out more media information and it breaks it down a bit, but... There's still more information to be found if you look at it on a desktop platform. But, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, video about Video Station on the DS1621+. Plus. If you want to find out more about this NAS, what it can, what it can't do, what do we like, what do we don't like, then do go into the comments to the links to NAS Compare, where there's my full review. And, of course, visit Span.com, uh, the NAS experts. They can help you every step of the way. Free advice, and they ship all around the world. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed it. Click subscribe. 
to learn more and I will see you next time.